The North Carolina Outer Banks is one of the most popular travel destinations in the world. Every year, millions of visitors descend on coastal towns from Matteo and Kitty Hawk to Hatteras and Ocracoke, while some villages along the Sound remain relatively isolated. Most of the early residents of the Outer Banks came south by boat from Tidewater, Virginia and the eastern shores of Maryland, and many of them had originally come from southwest England or the Ulster province of Ireland. Features of British and Scots-Irish English have been retained in the local dialect, though the language developed independently to take on a distinctive regional character. Today, this dialect is recognized as a part of our national heritage and a vital part of coastal culture. Now this is your captain speaking. This is the motor vessel, Governor Edward Hyde. This vessel is 161 foot long with a speed of 14.5 knots. This vessel carries 300 passengers and 30 automobiles. Thank you very much. <laughs> On the way to Swan Quarter, on the Governor Edward Hyde. I'm headed for jury duty, enjoying a wonderful ride. My hometown behind me, I won't be gone very long. Take me back to Oak Creek Coast, that's where I belong. Come on, let's get going. Hoy toy on the sand soil. Last night at the waterfall, night moonshine, no fish. Wait for my Uncle Wood. Get a going. Uh, hoi toy? What is it? It's, it's, high, high, it's hoi toy. <laughs> it's high tide. It's when the tide comes up high, you know. If you're born and raised around it, you, everybody's, you know, you just, it's normal to you. It's just like anything, you know. Uh, if you're born in uh, Japanese, you talk Japanese, you know what I mean? I, I was working at the community store and I had one woman chase me around the store. And she asked me all kinds of questions and I just went the other way. I just wasn't she was just there just asked me silly and ignorant questions because she wanted to hear me talk. As we came out of the Silver Lake and headed for Pamaco Sand, fishermen in the channel and the crab pots all around. The seagulls they were trailing and the pelicans diving a flash. Mollies in the fishermen's net were plugged in every night. When they told me that my kid, when I started teaching, that I was going to have to change my dialect so my kids would understand me. And I said, not where I'm going, they won't, because they all talk just like I do. In order to talk the way we talk, you, have you to really have ha had to have grown up here. That's just natural talking to everybody strange. And you know, uh, I go, I go to more head most of the time. Somebody talk. They say you're from Harkins Island, don't you? How you know? Say where you talk. Some places you go, and I talk to people. Like if I go to Beaufort, and I talk to somebody and order something in the thing, they ask me two or three times, two or three, two or three times, what is it? What do you want? And I, I had a, I want. <laughs> Every time I get on the telephone, and give my charge card, our charge card number, they be a one in there. And I would have to say that over and over and over again. And I say, hold everything. They say, what's the matter? I got, I, I got a solution for this. And I spell it, O-N-E, one. Oh, one, you know. <laughs> when I was in college, I, we had a tea to go to for the, um, for the president. I, well, I wanted to iron the dress to get the crease out of it where it had been taped up. And I went to every suite in that norm. Asking if they had an arm, I could bore you. No, nobody had an arm. Nobody had an arm. Couldn't find out everybody had one. They didn't know what I was asking for. They all had irons, but I needed an arm. <laughs> <laughs> 